In a way, I yeah, yes, yeah. good, 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 good. good. Yeah. Got red what is your oh? Uh, <laughs> yeah. What kind of work do you do? Oh my oh, gosh, yeah. oh, there, yeah. there, there. Oh, she's on. an entrepreneur. Oh, no. oh come on, that's too it's big. Just, uh, it's no, I'm not well, kidding. I was operating. Uh, no. I own the uh, hotel oh, and I was operating. I, uh, okay, everybody, we're recording. Okay. Everything. So you have, but now it's all gone. Okay. I'm free and clear. Okay, good, good. But you have people, people uh, skills from that, you know, ability to talk to easily yeah, people. Yeah, talk ideas, easily yeah. to people. She yes. had, she owned the beach store down in Huntington Beach for years. Okay, twenty-five years. Like, like, what is that? Second block. Year. Second block in. That well, that qualifies you to have some, you know, easy in conversation skills with people. I think. Yeah. Yeah, but I was a hermit though. For a while. Well, maybe that's when you're hermiting, but when you but you don't I'm appear to be that way today. <laughs> <laughs> you appear very present and, and available. I'm a hermit too when I'm hermiting, but I don't hermit all the time. The lamp. The lamp. Is that what you're Yeah. Pierre, we're puzzling over this strange thing that you left with us last night. Yeah. What are the what's the conditions? Are you talking? Or, um, I don't know. I was just in the neighborhood and I thought I'd drop by. And <laughs> I'd like to hear the. What's the conditions for the Papalogos? Uh, <laughs> ah. Ah. That's good. Look, that's that's <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a. I think you have to say I am. I'm trying to help her out of the body. I, I that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, thank you. Hmm. And then he gives her a pat and she goes <laughs> off, right? Whee! That's the way to do it. What was your comment? Well, I was thinking what was the conditions for a papalogos? That's what you left us with. One of the things you left us with. Yes. I think also it was to, uh, uh, why is the, why is there suffering if there is oh, a papalogos? Right, right, sorry. That's right. Exactly. What's the conditions for suffering? That's right. Well, I came up with ignorance. Right? And you did, you came up with? Ignorance. Well, I was thinking that if you have suffering, and you have people that have, if you're seeing and you're doing well, then you don't have ignorance. You're, you're not under a belief system. Well, uh, but I was. See, it raises a question that our friend Igmar has had for quite a while. Good. Ask him. Which is, how do you. How do you know whether or not you've answered a question properly? Or just how do you know when a question has been answered? Is that a good question? Mm -hmm. Like, why wasn't her answer adequate? Or would you say, hey, the reason she didn't get any applause, it was absolutely obvious and no one gave it down. Uh, because it didn't satisfy the parameters asked for in the question. So the question is, what are the conditions for the pathologos? And Regina said... And I, no, I added to it, mm -hmm. I think the last question was, why, why is there this curious thing called suffering yeah. when people have a pathologos? Right. And she was talking about... And she said, ignorance. A state free of ignorance, which does yeah, the condition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why isn't that an answer? Well, because we weren't asking about the condition where you're free of the pathologos. No, I didn't say that. It was conditions for suffering. Oh. Hey, have you ever known anyone who had a, a problem? Clear state. Uh, yes. Oh, 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 oh. Several people. Uh, is it a rare thing? Or a usual thing for there to be some accompanying suffering with along along with it. Very usual. Very usual. 
Yeah, you mean there's a certain kind of problem that if you have, you also have suffering? Is that true in mathematics? If there's a mathematical problem, if you can't solve it, you suffer? Nope. I don't think so. Do you? Yeah. I've experienced some stress. You mean you've experienced suffering when you haven't? Oh. Stress no. about not solving a math problem. Oh. Thinking I'm stupid. That's oh. different. Well, then it's more than in the pathologos. It's also in math. Uh, Regina disagrees. I disagree. I don't think it's because you're What does she disagree it. about when you and I were agreeing? <laughs> Go ahead. I don't think you find suffering in doing math. I think you may find suffering in your belief about yourself in doing math, but not math. It may be the... Uh, he suffers in mathematics when he can't solve a problem because he gets frustrated and doesn't like the idea that he can't solve the problem. That's right. But, that's not math. but is it always true in mathematics that if you have a problem trying to solve something, you end up suffering? No. What would you say? No. No. So you're just an unusual case. No, I'd agree with. Oh, oh now you agree. Okay. Jeff's answer. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for helping him. <laughs> Thank you. Wait a minute. Are there other kinds of problems people have? Mm. And do they always, or seldom, or invariably accompany this curious thing called suffering? No, no. no. I think only the pathologos problem is the one that accompanies suffering or suffering accompanies it. What do you think? Why is frustration and stress not suffering? What do you think? Why is what? By the way, would you agree Why? there's things called having a problem? Yes. Um, does it follow or, or is it rare that people who have personal problems go through some kind of suffering? <clears throat> well, I think they do suffer, but maybe they don't realize they have a problem, so that's why they're still in it, still suffering in it. But uh, see, I'm. <clears throat> Um, I, I don't think that's true because uh, I've known many a person who in no way suffered but had all kinds of deep problems and they just didn't, they didn't suffer, they didn't give a damn about the fact they had a problem. I don't believe in those people. You don't believe? No. <laughs> what? I don't believe they don't suffer. <laughs> what? Though they're like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> huh? What's this? No, I think if you got a deep problem, you got to suffer. Then those people I met denied they really were suffering when they didn't realize they were suffering? Uh-oh, That's a, this is a different kind of problem. You know, you mean it's it's possible for for some people to have a problem and do not exhibit suffering, though they really are suffering. Yeah, like rich people. What kind of people? <laughs> uh, maybe many of the rich who assume that they've got it all when they don't. Yeah, they're above it all. They don't suffer. You'd say yes, I do. But they're good at hiding it. From themselves especially. Yeah. Is that? Oh, so there are two kinds of suffering. The kind that comes out and the other you can keep in your back pocket. Right. Is that right? Is that your position? Yes. Two kinds of 
No, 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 no. What? I say there's only one kind of suffering, but there are two reactions to it. Oh, well, there's one suffering, but two reactions. One you... Okay. What would you call it? Uh, I would say denial ain't just a river in Egypt, baby. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Uh, <laughs> huh? What was it? Not two kinds of suffering, but... Just one kind of suffering. Two reactions. Two, 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 reactions. two reactions. You can decide to do something about it and look into it, or you can try, try to ignore it. Pretend it's not there. Uh, do something about it. <laughs> try to ignore it. Okay. Well, the second, that's included in the second. You gotta keep on suffering as long as you deny it. I think that misses the point though, Jeff, because Pierre was saying there's a the kind of suffering that comes out, like like you can't miss it, and there's another that you keep in your back pocket. And yeah. these two reactions seem to be not not a, not addressing well, those maybe two. Maybe I'm not following that. What, what do you mean by coming out? You mean it's, it becomes more obvious? You can't you can't deny it anymore? There's a kind of suffering that presents itself so strongly that you uh, you finally have to deal with it. Is that what coming out means? Yeah. <laughs> but then I would, I, I would call that not a different kind, but a different quantity. It's just a more intense version. It's a problem. It's the same suffering, but it's just gotten it's admitting of degrees, but it's the same kind. See, the question would be. Is that kind of suffering that you just described found among humans? Yes. Uh, does it only occur with the pathologos or can it happen with other things? Other kinds of failures. Like, is it unique to this thing called the pathologos? Okay, so I... Can it only occur? What only occur? What part of it? What's, I'm not following the question. Can it, can it only occur with the pathologos, or can it occur with other types of problems? This is your question, right? Yeah. And I'm, I just want to be sure I'm understanding the question. When you say, can it, what can it only occur? Here. Are we talking about... You suffering? just described suffering? two reactions two reactions to this curious thing called suffering. Yeah. Is that present only with the pathologos or is it a, can those, it occur in other arenas as well? Those two kinds of suffering? <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. I think as you have defined it and uh, we are agreeing, I would, I'm, I would, I would be hard pressed to find non-pathologos problems that would exhibit those two types of suffering. Well, oh. hard pressed. I can't think of any. But you can't ask him how, so he said he, have, he, has difficult, he would have difficulty finding it. Yeah. So, <laughs> right? So. I can't think of one because, because I prefer to be in the first group who, who looks at it and, and we, we go, well, if I have a tough problem and it's deep and it's it's causing some serious havoc in my life and the people around me, it probably is half a logo space. Let me look at it. And every time that I've done that, and I think those of us around have, we have gotten insights out of it. So that's why I'm saying I can't think of, I'm, I'm, well, I'll, I'll be more strong in my language. No! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> What's all this hedging? Now he's solid, Pierre. He's certain. Well, <laughs> I'll go for it. <laughs> See, if you can say there's then this one kind that exists with the pathologos, our question is how come? Why? Since there are many kinds of problems people have that do not have this curious thing called suffering. Like math problems, or how to start by, by the way, 
I understand you're one of those kinds of people that uh, spend some of your time hitting uh, white, little white keys. Little buttons, yeah. And black keys. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Pianos? What is it? Well, I have a white computer keyboard and a black computer keyboard, too, so what are we... Matter of fact, yeah, yeah. you call it playing the piano, don't you? Yes. Huh? Yes. Have you ever made a mistake when you're playing the piano? All the time. Do you suffer because of it? No. See? So there's a kind well, of mistake you can make? I used to, but that's the same as... <laughs> I, I see that as Okay. Marks. You're used to, so... <laughs> It no longer functions. You address uh, yeah. So there's a place where people can make mistakes that they don't suffer as a consequence of it. Yes. Hmm. So our question is, is it not curious there's one kind of problem that you can't avoid suffering of the two kinds you mentioned? Yes. Oh, we're going to equate suffering with, not with this kind of problem. That's interesting. So, I thought suffering was what comes along with this kind of problem. But why does it come but along gonna, with it? Are we going to say it's the same thing? Look, why don't we find a person who has a problem and has no suffering? <laughs> uh, the laugh. Have you heard that? <laughs> not going to happen. What? It's not going to happen. <laughs> Just ignore her, okay? <laughs> Uh, can you tell us why you think it's inevitable that there's that connection between the two? Well, good, good, good beginning. <laughs> well, well, I was thinking of last night and thinking, oh, if I know myself, mm. then would I be suffering? Or if because I function under beliefs that I think I know myself. That caused me all kinds of problems and suffering. And I walk around thinking I know myself when I don't. So I say that it's people, it's because the pathologos is of such a nature that it's an appearance of, no, appearance of knowing oneself. You have a set of beliefs that you think you know, and therefore you don't know. And if you don't know, then it's inevitable that you're going to suffer. Because of what reason? Because your self, your true self, is not going to like it. Mm. And they're going to say... If Boy, you've got a true self that likes and doesn't like, and if right. it doesn't like, it suffers. No. Why? It doesn't suffer. No, no, what is it about it that it doesn't like it? I'll go along with your reasoning, <laughs> but what is it about it that it doesn't like it? Because it doesn't like the fact that you believe Something it doesn't like the itself. fact that you believe and people go around believing all over the place. God. You believe something about it that isn't true. It wants, it wants to be free. It Saul wants, wants to, to be free and creative and, and it's being limited, right? Okay. If I'm sitting at the piano, <laughs> and I'm pissed off at myself. Uh, you know, I want, to, I want to be out there having fun, whether I make mistakes or not. It doesn't matter if I'm playing Mary Had a Little Lamb. I, ha I can have fun doing that. But if I'm, so, if, I'm, if I'm standing in my way so badly that I can't even have fun with Mary Had a Little Lamb, uh, I'm, I'm shackled. Soul doesn't like to be shackled, right? Are you going along with... What yeah. Regina said, and yeah. adding to it. I'm adding. Yeah, I was wondering, did you, are we letting Regina off the hook, or what? <laughs> well, we're letting her off the hook so, a little bit. It's not just. It's not. Uh, you know what he added? The word badly. <laughs> right? Badly. In, in essence, badly. isn't isn't that what he was saying? Um, it comes down to the fact that. No, he brought in freedom. Freedom. And therefore. And therefore, my freedom was restricted, and therefore, I suffer. Apparently. Well, no, no, see? Uh, how do you know what, like, know what is it about that, that, that we would say, okay, that's an answer. Now, that's the problem, okay? Well, why not, why not, let's vote. And if we all vote, then then we know we're right well, in our decision because whenever people vote, they always vote with their 
Uh, well, now they don't, really. I think he's answering no. the, <laughs> the conditions. I think what um, what Jeff is offering is that one of the conditions for the pathologos or suffering is um, the impulse to be free. What, what? Freedom. Oh, or the need for freedom. The need for freedom. And it yeah. doesn't like being restricted. No. Yeah. No. Okay, that's it. <laughs> well. Uh, what? Can it be part of that? I, I don't know if I'm, if, I'm, um, if I'm progressing or if I'm, I'm backtracking, but I, I, I heard you say that um, he, he was talking about the shackles and freedom, and um, you were saying uh, about putting it in your back pocket and not acknowledging it. So I was wondering if um, suffering could be put off onto somebody else if you don't acknowledge it. With the lack of accountability and acknowledgement, does suffering affect somebody else? Does someone else suffer because you don't acknowledge suffering? Uh, I think it's worse. I think you want people to suffer the same way you do, so you, <laughs> so you teach them how to suffer. Yeah, that's <laughs> and then they feel at home. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. But when did that, didn't ex did that explain it? That's, that's did it? Teaching. What Jai offered? Of no. Yeah. Oh. Jai raised another question. <laughs> ah. Hey, this is like an effect. This is an effect. Does someone else suffer because you don't acknowledge the suffering? What are the, <laughs> what are the, what are the consequences of you not acknowledging the suffering? Well, that's one way of getting rid of the suffering. <laughs> now, I want to sneak in and... I, yeah. I found that this was empty, so I walked go around. We'll try to have good answers by the time you get there. It's still cooking, Jeff. I want to try it. Give it a minute. It's Anybody be, else? Uh, it's going to be a minute because the coffee is about three minutes. Coffee is about three minutes. All right. Mm. Mm. Well, isn't everything in this world a condition for suffering or a condition for having a problem? Like our birth itself? Being in a body? It may be, but that didn't answer why it's that way and why it has to be that way or should be that way or that's the condition of life. That you have to suffer? You have to suffer. God wanted to create a universe with suffering in it. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Listen. Um, he saw some good in that. The only, the only question then is, um, let's get him down here and ask him, <laughs> and, and ask him, hey man, look here, how come you had to add that? Uh, Offer of a cup of coffee. Are you, if you don't mind my using the expression, are you somewhat perverse? <laughs> since, since it isn't necessary? Twisted. Here, are you... Some of them say, when I look at the uh, situations and then whatever that I go through the, the situation, or I just look up, I joke or so something. See that? I didn't get it. See, look here. See. Would you agree if there's a lot of space there should be a lot of room for a lot of things. Yeah. Including problems. I hope so, because I got tons of shit. Right? Second, would you agree that if there's a lot of time, there's a lot of time for a lot of things? Thank goodness. So if space and time are infinite, there could be enough room for everything that we call our universe somewhere else. Right? I mean, all of it. Yeah. Produced by a different God. Uh -oh. Enough room? Enough time? Mm -hmm. no. maybe, maybe this one was, uh, you know, created <laughs> by a God that still had had to do some more work, but decided to make one before he was ready to make it. It's an amateur universe. Right, right. He, he wasn't accomplished as an artist. I mean, his creation 
had this tragic flaw in it. But somewhere else there's another universe where it's, it's, it's pure. This one is faulted. <clears throat> no? Uh-oh. <laughs> Here I thought that was a good point. No, I think that the presence of suffering in the universe is part of what makes it perfect. Perfectly created. Then you're going to have to tell me about the designer of this who found it necessary to bring such immense suffering to every single... Uh, did dogs suffer too? <clears throat> That's a good question. Some guy just did a study. Cow. Everybody does studies in this culture. They never study themselves, but they study every damn thing else. They even, <laughs> they even study the behavior of ants. But this guy found out that, thank you very much, <laughs> this guy found out that dogs left in apartment houses, you know, in private homes, etc., when people go to work, they get frustrated, and they wait for their beloved master to come home, and they go through long periods of agony. <laughs> And that's why when they come, the master comes home, they flip around and jump around and cause a havoc. And then the master tries to put them down and keep them calm. If the dog is so happy, he doesn't know why the hell he's being put down just because he's happy that his master is coming in through the door. That's suffering, see? So it's all over the place. Though they haven't found it yet in squirrels. But mites. if someone gets enough mites. money, squirrels have mites. Yeah, it's all it takes is money. Oh, well, that's that's that money. Because, sure. because this, the truth is that that's the only thing that does away with suffering. No, money. no, it, money. It creates a lot of suffering. Money. Money. No. No. People fight. People suffer over money. <laughs> this for years. How come we're not nailing this more quickly? <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're starting what was that? Yeah. I'm trying. Good. Good thing. <laughs> I'm listening well, by the way. I know this thing. Mm. Well. Uh, Well, Pierre, starting with the idea of the watcher, who I assume can only appreciate suffering but would never be a sufferer, who could only see suffering but would never be a sufferer. If there's a watcher, then at what point does suffering enter in and play such a vital role? Because the watcher is always going to be watching that, so it's always transcending that. Yeah, uh, in other words, that's like absolutely you, correct. You, you, several times this week you've mentioned what the implications of suffering are on the watcher, in conversations scattered around yeah. here and there. Mm. Would, would you mind bringing that back in for a second, just Thank for you, the David. sake of mm. recollection, because you've mentioned it in several different, mm. last night, yesterday morning, yeah. a few contexts, where if the watcher is watching, last night you said, it, it, it doesn't look. What did you say? God. It, it, it was like, I don't know. I'll have to look at the tape, but you did say the watcher will not accept the suffering. No? You remember what it was? Yeah. Um, and then yesterday morning you said the watcher would not accept any game. That's true. It doesn't like him. It just doesn't you, like him. You have a good memory, and here I was ready to forget that. But, but, but you, there, you know what, that raises, see, that raises two questions, which are a lot of fun. Uh, among a whole group of religious people called Church of Religious Science, they say, God is all that is. And when they say that in, in front of me, I've been known to have said, I shed a tear for that God because if uh, he's everything, uh, he sure as hell is suffering a hell of a lot. And he misses out. 
the other side of that. Whatever it is that is the watcher, does it watch suffering? Or is it suffering? See, I, I'm, I'm, the jury's still out on that, but I think it watches it because there can be a turning about at that point and a free from suffering. I experience that in minor ways. Mm. So I have a I my my position is that the watcher doesn't experience suffering. It only sees suffering. Okay. See it's not suffering. Th then see uh, that that raises the level of our discussion, but it's still there's still a mystery then right, about its origin. And it looks like its origin is not the self, but something else. If the self is the watcher. You mean the origin of suffering? Not just the origin. It, it, it does not suffer, nor is it its origin. Absolutely not. Yeah. That is to say, if you, if you meet one of these people that has a watcher, you could say, by the way, uh, do you ever see uh, that self that you have, the watcher, does it do anything? And among the things it might do, does one of them produce suffering? I mean, do you ever watch that? It's likely they'd say, huh? What? No, I think it just watches. Yeah. Well, now we're back to uh, uh, if the self is not the thing that is suffering, it identifies with it. I hate to say yeah, but... <laughs> right. Well, or something identifies with yeah. it. Yeah, it does. Something. And uh, now we're in the mystery of... Uh, why the subject identifies this with the suffering they experience. And that's a great subject. And maybe it's necessary, but it still leaves open what is the nature of that suffering. Now that we know it ain't in the, in the self or the watcher. Because there's one thing curious, I, I don't think any of us have ever met a person who once they see the roots of their suffering, in every case they are no longer bound by it, they no longer experience, they're free of it. You say, you often see that? Now, would you agree that if a person sees through the, the problem that they have, and the suffering they're experiencing, they step away from it and no longer have it. In other words, it's something that is droppable. I think so. Uh, right? From time to time. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and, and anyone who has that insight knows that that's not themselves. That's something they are experiencing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We come by and say, well, now that I know it's not you, how come you uh, identify with it? And what the hell is it? And why is it there? Yeah, why? Right? Why is it there? And it's a, at these times you can always turn to Regina since she just <laughs> made a noise. Yeah, I make noise. Now, noise come on, noise. Right, you made some kind of acknowledgement. <laughs> right, I heard it. <laughs> yes, I did. Well, I, we identify because we think it's got virtues. What has virtues? The pain, the suffering has virtues? Mm -hmm. The belief that whatever belief is attached to the suffering or the suffering that goes along with holding on to a belief has an appear, has virtue, appearances of virtue. So the watcher gets fooled? Because it wants to see virtue, and it, it, it takes a false image of virtue and calls that virtue, and then 
puts up with all the suffering because it wants to maintain the idea of virtue? That appearance of virtue, yes. Hmm. Uh, Here, let, but, let, let, let's try it this way. Okay. All right. Hold, that uh, hold that thought up. and say, uh, have you ever been present when someone is going through their problem and they're seeking a solution to it and as a result of that they go to some early scene and discover where it came from, its origin? Then in that moment when they're recalling it and trying to break through it by discovering the origin of it, we can see suffering. It must occur right before the problem, nothing. It comes in somehow in a very simple scene, and invariably it has no violence in it. There's no child abuse in it in that sense, right? So it, it's not one of these terrible stories. But it comes in. So let us assume the child goes into some kind of a scene. Authorities are there. Bang! They walk away suffering. Hmm. What the hell is that moment? What? What? Hey, what, where'd you get it, kid? Just because that happened? Uh, right? Wasn't a problem before. Wasn't, yeah, no suffering before, no problem before. Yeah. So it, it has its onset, doesn't it? I mean, it's, it sneaks in there. But wait, 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 wait. Uh, maybe we want to make this, I have a question, and maybe we'll make it a footnote for later, because I don't want to derail this. This is great where you're going. But I thought we brought, what is, what is the Greek word? We, we bring a a way of being with us from previous life. Right. That does set up, uh, I'm probably going to use the wrong words here, maybe we didn't have this problem yet. If you didn't have a prior life. But That's the origin of suffering, having a prior life. No, no, <laughs> no, please. Uh, it's no, just, I, I, that, that was an un, unintentional joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yet we do bring with us a certain... Well, I just don't know the subject well enough, but we've read through it, and I don't even remember what dialogue we were in. Do you, David? The, is it Metala? That's very important, see, oh, because there are, there are there people that have... There's a position that sets yeah, us up yeah. based on, and it seems to me that's a type of ignorance that you're bringing also with you. Absolutely right. Because if you play the game of looking for, at problems, you'll discover there are times when the parents do something in the presence of other children and they will all walk away with a different conclusion and a different degree of suffering. And one of the theories is that everybody then who comes into that situation must have come in with a background different from one another. And since you can go back to earlier and earlier scenes, it appears that people come into this world with already some way of interpreting based upon some prior experience. Thank you, okay. Right. But that still leaves us with the question, how, then we're seeing them come coming into the scene with a new one, getting a new one. So our question is still there. Of all the talks you've ever heard, or went through yourself, do you, have a, do you recall any very simple event that took place that we were both puzzled that it could ever produce a problem since it appeared to be, if someone walked by, they'd never say something terrible was going on? Seems to be a trick. Right, it looks rather curious, but how the hell did that problem ever create the suffering and the child that it did? 
Uh, I have one. Good. Thank you. I don't have to visit you. All right. Unfortunately. Now, if I tell the story, uh, no smirking. Oh, God. All right. All right. And no, uh, I, d I doubt whether it's possible. <laughs> it's not going to happen here. <laughs> all right, here I'm it not is. There it is. Okay. We're already smoking. All right, right. Okay, here it is. <laughs> this happens to have been uh, a much a girl, a young girl, and uh, she's in that culture that that has that. Uh, uh, Christ Day, they call it. Oh, yeah. Christmas. 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 <laughs> and she's young, right? Eight, nine or something. And she runs into the living room the Christmas morning and gets her... They have these things. They, they use socks. <laughs> and I think most of them, they try to clean before they use them. <laughs> But in any case, they stuff things in it for the child. And this child reached in and pulled out a lump of black coal. Now, oh, hey, coal, what is, you know, a piece of coal is nothing. The sock was clean. How could it ever produce a problem? No violence. And that had a real impact on the child. That's absurd. Therefore, problems are absurd. You shouldn't have a problem with something like that. It's frightening. So what do you think? I think that's what? a perfect what? way of getting a problem. Oh, good. Now, it's not likely that such an event would ever take place, agree? Right. <laughs> it's not likely. No. It's, but it's, it's true. Highly likely. But it's true. All right, do you remember such, a, such an event? Very. You heard it in some discussion? Oh, yeah. Did it produce some kind of suffering? Yeah. Okay. See, if you were to film a lot of these scenes where pathologos takes place, you wouldn't you wouldn't spot it as a... I were curious, but... Some people nothing that, that could have the impact that it, that it has and produce the suffering it has. Yeah, some people may have thought that it was a, what? some people may have thought it was a nice rock. You know, they have collected Well, it was rocks. black and it was, it was shiny and and uh, it comes from the earth and it, it has a great utility as well as beauty to it. What the hell is, is wrong with putting barbecue? a piece of ro uh, coal in a someone's shop? Yep. Can you speculate? Speculate how it turned into suffering? I think that's the issue. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can speculate. <laughs> Would you encourage her, sir? Go, Virginia. Go ahead. Um, well, it, there's a significance in the meaning of black coal that had to have a history to it. And the history is... Um, and the significance of having pieces of black hole and what it means as to what that means if you get one and uh, what that means for the person who gets it and who they are and what it represents um, that person and it's all bad if you get a piece of black hole that's exactly what you are bad black hole and evil, bad, no good, can't change. There's, If it's that black, then there's no hope. Black is evil. No. But hey, it happens to be a symbol no, of great utility, but you mentioned of black warmth, of strength. Because of the strength of it. And, but diamond. in her family, what is it? Evil. It's a message. It's a flag on the field, and you're going to lose our love. And it forces you to think, well, if I'm kakos, if I'm bad, why? Why am I bad? What did I do? Where did I go over the line? What, what did it do to you? 
I, I presume it may have happened too. Yes. Oh, that's curious. Well, coal was a um, hmm. thing that my grandmother and early on they used to have huge sections of their house underneath in the cellar where they used to heat the house through coal. And there was nothing good about it at all. It was dirty, it was awful, it, we didn't want to stay away from it. Mm. You had certain people who came in and oh, did it. Oh, it has work. a whole history. Tremendous. Now you're talking. And then, so, and it's in the cellar, it's in dark bins, um, and we were always told to not get even close to it, not even be there. And there was always fear put into it that uh, the coal bins were themselves dangerous to go into. And that's where um, they would take up and that's how they heated the house. And they would have these the, the big furnace. And it was scary, terrifying. So to come in and So to come in and give your daughter a piece of coal represents a dark place, very unwanted, a place where you don't want to be, and it makes it very clear that they don't want you, mm -hmm. because okay. they wouldn't want to visit that place themselves. Uh, so, yeah. It looks like the pathologos comes in with the heavy interpretation. Mm -hmm. Like, it, th that would not have the effect if you didn't have that background. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So it looks like all of, the, all of the meanings attached to whatever is going on has to come together in a unity right? and express something very personal that they think about you. Right? Because if someone else gave it to you, you, you know, it would, it would have no effect. And, what? and there was a lot of discussion growing up among the cousins, the family members, you don't want to get a, get a piece of black coal. That's that was the threat for Christmas. That was something you don't want to get, and it was part of the natural milieu discussion. No, nobody wants a piece of black coal because that would mean it, there's, there's something bad about it. So, it not only was the coal in the bin, but also just discussions. See, if at any one of those times, anybody on that group could have said, isn't this a bunch of bullshit? <laughs> yeah. Why are I we mean, talking about the coal right? I mean, for it's, Christmas? Like, isn't it, <laughs> like, if anyone came in and said, look here, uh, if this is the way our families, plural, are express themselves <laughs> and make it therefore an object of reflection, what would happen to it? Then you don't just get a piece of coal in your stocking, you get a piece of coal on fire in your stocking. Yeah. Or or you could immediately get smacked, yeah. It's a, it's a respected... But like, the, the, there's a whole, a whole belief structure that has to remain intact and not questioned yeah. to have the power it has. You come into a you come into a situation with an interpretive structure, and that's why you can't have a pathologos until you re, until you have language. Hmm. And uh, uh, well, wait, hold on a second. I like that thought for a second because we have. <laughs> We have a few rare stories of children brought up with animals. Yeah, they're wild. And later are rescued and brought into civilization. They grew up without language, at least spoken human language. 
Are they without pathologos? Possibly, potentially. I see. This idea that I just expressed is true and it's not true. There are different kinds of problems because um, there are clear examples which are rather curious of problems that had their origin before language, before the child matures to the age where language is accessible to them. And there are also the kinds of problems where language is just becoming accessible, so their vocabulary is very limited. Uh, Remember that great story of Barbara's. She's two and a half. They moved into a new area in Southern California the backyard was still on, you know, just undeveloped, little and wild. And she was finally allowed out, allowed or permitted or sneaked out, however you want to describe it. In any case, her mother came out and saw her, and she had a frog in her hand. And it was her pet. Like she, the, the frog stayed on her hand. She could touch it. And her mother came out and and just screamed at her, "Get that fucking dirty thing off your hand!" And squashed it and killed it in front of her. That's that's pre language. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. just that's when it's become no, when it's just I mean, becoming she, accessible. Yeah, yeah. Very few words. But two and a half. Are you using that as an Pierre? Is that an example of a pre language pathologos transmission yes. scene? Yes. What, the, because that, I thought that, you said the earlier, point where language is just becoming just, accessible to the child. So the child picked that up at such an early yeah. age because it was just enough to right, understand. Right, right. But I thought you were saying earlier that. Yeah, one, one more. The thing about... Oh, oh there's one uh, more. Yeah. Um, someone also reported that when they were in the crib around six or so many months, uh, um, somehow uh, a glass broke within the crib, a Vaseline jar, and the child had to be taken to the hospital but got cuts. And somehow the, ch- the child uh, realized mother was a danger. That the child didn't break the, va- the Vaseline jar glass. Something strange went on for the jar to be smashed in a crib, which normally you can't. <laughs> you know? Not a lot of hard edges. Right, a lot, not a lot of rocks in a crib. Uh, could that have, have caused the child to have some concern? Terrified mother. Uh, the beginning of terrified mother, afraid of mother. Mother, would, mother started screaming. at a very early, very early age then. Like, how many how many traumas take place when we allow war and and severe economic conditions? to run through families and we create the conditions for suffering I mean right I mean we create we we do this to cultures our country now we're the Nazis of the world we bomb we restrict we repress we're doing this. To, we're doing this to humanity. We're doing this all over the place. What are we doing? There are people that that in our government, who are called neocoms, who want war, who want this 
destructive process to play itself out. They want this. They are designing this. I, hey, no one is saying, hey, how come we've gotten a 10-year war that ne never went anywhere and, and never came into existence for any reason? No one. Like our whole culture is going to fall on its, face, on its face or on its ass with financial scandals at the root of all, and no one is saying, hey, how, how did we allow this to take place? How did we allow people to steal our, all the wealth of our nation? There is, there's no reflection. Therefore, pathologos can play a game. If you create the conditions for suffering, you're producing pathologos. We're, we're producing suffering. So we have to stop and say, hey, wait a minute. What did the, what did the parents do when they put that lump of coal in the, in the sock? Like, is that similar to a drone? Sending a drone and blowing up people at a distance? Creating suffering at the other end? Industry, right? Collateral damage. What a word to use to describe killing innocent people. Well, the idea of the, the coal is sort of unconditional that the whole milieu is all uh, a judgment against you. Every, there's no specific judgment, but you have been categorically, and I forgot what the first word was, uh, yes. unconditionally uh, judged yes. as cold water the, the authority. And kind of the, 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 the cloud we live under with our economy and, and war and, and threats. Uh, there are and, and that we can't oppose that there's there's no from from a victim's point of view there's not you're carrying a gun there's no reason for it and yet you're going to be subject to it which is yeah, yeah let me like, see if I, I can uh, uh, take what's been said and uh, the child has to the child or the individual who's going to be doing this suffering has to assume, believe that what's going on is justified. Like our people and our government believe they are justified. They have justification for doing what they're doing. Then they, then, then they can impose suffering. In every family, there has to come some moment when they feel they're justified in doing what they're doing that that is the condition for a pathologos but the child has to the child has to accept it because what would happen if the child were to say at that moment hey how come you're acting so weird pop hey mom why what are you doing that's rather curious you know that's rather curious it's not necessary But the first case I ever had, I don't like calling them cases, they're people. I'm working with alcoholics way back in the 50s, see? And I'm hired. At those days, you could be a psychologist without having a degree, like in other states, in Washington State, etc. And I was working with, uh, at a re rehabilitation center. And so all I wanted to do is try to understand chronic alcoholics. And I started working with periodic alcoholics. That's because the center where we were in was in San Francisco, and the guys would go on drunks, and they'd go dry for a while, and they'd go back on drunks, and I had one of these. Very nice guy. Um, he had a PhD in chemistry. And he'd go on drunks. They were horrendous, you know, for months. And everything would be destroyed. And then he'd, in the hospital, and I'd come out. And so we'd have talks. So I got to the point where we used to be able to 
go to the blackboards. We had about six of them on the wall. And we just described the journeys that he wanted that he could recollect. After about the third time, we said, hey, isn't this similar to the... the, the yeah, it is similar. I wonder why it's similar. Came back again, and he knew it was similar. He said, yeah, by God, I'm doing the same damn thing. So we both looked at it, and I said, uh, uh, what was it like when you finally got, got, you know, picked up off the street, you're, you're a wreck? Uh, what's that like? And he says, well, I, I don't know. I said, but, uh, only thing that comes to my mind, he says, is, uh, you know, my mother, my family are Greek, and uh, we're part of like that, that old Spartan group. And she said, you know, something curious. He said, I, I remember my mother, uh, when I used to go out and play football, we used to play football, you know, uh, we didn't have uniforms and things like that to replace street football and and it gets scarred up a bit. And she, my mother, he said, you know, she used to greet me as I was going out to play football. And she'd say to me, son, I want you to do your best either come back whole or come back on a, uh, on a journey, being carried back. And that's what he, hey, those are the only times she ever showed that much concern and care and loving for the kid. For the most part, she ignored him. So that was the great high point in his life, when his mother really was showing affection and concern in that key word. What did he do in all of his drunks? He himself to where he could come back on a journey. Yeah, the Spartan, the Spartan slogan was either come home with your shield or on it. <laughs> she was still living it. <laughs> Telling her some, when you're going out to play this game, which is pretty deadly in a way, either come home with your shield or on it. So he did. He came home on, on the shield. An option. Like that scene could be filmed by any number of people, and you never say it's a problem. But he knew it was time for him to come home on a shield. It's ancient. You know, they're ancient. They're, they're ancient. Like Regina said, her whole family, her whole culture is in that coal game it goes back to ancient, ancient and there's also a it just occurred to me while it, it came coal it was representative with the devil too it had that relationship how that came up I, I don't know the history but I know it was related and if you got it that would mean that you are bad the and you're the devil well it just occurred to me that when I was three years old I got or maybe three or four um, my mother did something and I, my retali my getting, she got angry and wanted me to do something and my, in defiance I stuck my tongue out at her and she immediately grabbed me and pulled me in and took me into the bathroom and said I'm taking, I'm washing your mouth out with soap to take the devil off your tongue mm. so there's a history to the coal and also the idea of devil and that I didn't make that connection until just now that given there's a pattern that if you do these kinds of things uh, defy what I did for that piece of coal <laughs> it, it, there's no nothing specific about what I specifically did that was bad 
was young and I had a good year, I thought. So can you generalize and say, uh, whatever convinces you you're no good is the beginning of your suffering? Now you can dramatize that and say evil, bad, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no good is good word. Like when you, when you have to say you're no good, then you're carrying a weight, and that weight is suffering. Yeah, that's weird. That's Isn't that curious? Yeah. How, how that changes your entire being. See, so. When, when people, uh, like when you, even now, are going back over that story, mm -hmm. it's likely that to that degree, whatever is left of that is right now being diminished. Like, yeah. is it helpful to go through that, just to review that? Yes, because even one of the, the thing that you mentioned when you started was, if you just took this scene as you started out and describe it is there anything that you would say was problematic in it and I was shocked at that moment when you just said it and I said I've never thought of it that way I've always seen it as bad that there was you know represented that I was no good I never thought that there was any way other than to look at it that way but you said well all it is is a piece of coal you could have said Hey, thanks for the piece of coal, Mom. What did other kids get? What did my brother and sister get? A piece yeah. of cement or something? Yeah. Till that moment, I never considered until just yeah. that there was another way of seeing that scene. Yeah. So yes, yeah. to that degree, I'm, um, I'm see, more removed. See, the, the other side of this is that when you say yourself, <sighs> tell yourself, not tell yourself, see yourself as no good or evil, then all kinds of activities are now there for you, whether you like it or not, because you're evil. I mean, you can't do what's good if you're evil. So your choices now in life are, are narrowed and twisted. But if, re if reflection can reduce it, the curious thing about it, see, taking just what Regina said, we don't, we don't grasp the implications of calling yourself no good and accepting that judgment that you're no good. Right? Like even now, there may still be parts of it that still linger that haven't been identified that are worth reflecting on. It, that has that power, like it's so pervasive. It's like it seeps into every corner of your psyche and, and it can't just be extracted like a tooth. Right? Are you curious? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, I was curious. That must be because the self is pretty pervasive. <clears throat> and not like a tooth. When I'm suffering, everywhere the watcher looks, there is suffering. Yeah. See, and the watcher wants to watch the dissolution of the problem. It does. Right? It does. Like, it's, I, it's hot on this. This is the thing it really wants to get rid of. I think so. Everywhere. Even among the rich? I don't know about that. Yeah. They're a different breed of people. <laughs> They've got green on their fingers. <laughs> It looks like the, the, the thing that motivates the parent to act in such a oh, mean you. way is fear motivated too. Like, for example, the way that the mother would put a piece of coal in, in a sock. Hold it, excuse me. I was distracted. <laughs> Say it again. I was saying it looks like fear yeah. of the parent is behind the mean activities that they yeah. do unconsciously toward their children. Yes. Like, for example, washing her mouth out with soap might have been a, an idea that 
if I let my child act like this, then that's going to reflect poorly on me. I'll be a bad parent unless I stop this, this resistance. So there, I see the fear that there's fear behind her mother. Maybe if I don't put the coal in there, that's giving her a message that you better behave. So I see there's some kind of fear in the parent that's that's behind. Oh that, yeah. That kind of. Oh, fear. without a doubt. Yeah. Well, it's not just. It's like oh. a transmission kind. Of, oh yeah. Of their own. Oh yeah. Brokenness. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And oh, yeah, and and that. And that is repeated yeah. all the way back into the past. Yeah, that's curious, isn't it? Like if you were ever to meet your great, 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 great grandfather and mother, you'd find the same problem. Isn't that it? It's carried for generations. But can it, can it also be the worry of uh, that that the parent had the most faith within that child, so they're the most no, critical no, no, no. over their future? That they, that person could become a success or, or live up to being proud, that, that parent could be proud of that child growing up and developing if they stay focused and on their path as hard as possible. So they're the most disciplined out of the, and most criticized too, out of the children of the group. Yeah, see, the, the, you're, you're right, see, but there are some, the, 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 like, parents know that they're doing what they're doing, but they don't know why they're doing it. Right. And some, some occasions seem so minor, you know, a bypasser would never even recognize something is going on. Yet it can have such power. I mean, that's astonishing, you know, like the ones we used this morning. They're dramatic, like the coal is dramatic, killing the frog, the child frog is t terrible, right? But they're very innocuous little scenes where the imposition, like uh, if, you're in a, if you're in a culture or a family that has what, what can be called uh, uh, a pervasive problem, you know, it's like, a problem that covers everything. Like, uh, uh, it may not, you may not think it's possible, but uh, in some families there's a hatred, a genuine hatred, that's pervasive over a certain kind of thinking. like a certain kind of speculating, a certain way of using the mind. And therefore, it, it never, it doesn't focus on any particular event. The kid can pick that up. It's pervasive. It's, it, it doesn't come out of it. We call that a milieu problem. Now, it may, they may be highlighted in some particular event, but it's already, it's been there from the beginning. Uh, are those, are the milieu, uh, in your experience, and Regina, Ingmar, people who've done a lot of midwifery, are the milieus no. more difficult, uh, or, uh, yeah, more difficult to pick up because when you have uh, the opposite problem, where the person had a rare event, like the mother saying, come back on your, right, one way or the other, uh, whole or on a gurney. That's the only time that she showed the, such caring. That's rare. Uh, and it's highly significant, dramatic. But the opposite is milieu, and it's it's so pervasive, and it's so built in. It was every day. That's right. Is it more, are the milieu probably right. more difficult to, That's to, right. to excavate out of the psyche? Yes. Because there's such a part of us yes. for so many years. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That we don't even see it? Yeah, this is... When doing midwifery? Uh, you can even talk about it this way. Like, what is the German problem? Mm. The German has a problem. And that is the fundamental thing that, that German culture induces in all of their children. Duty. Oh, well, that's... 
That's Nietzsche. <laughs> right? Duty. You've got to do your duty. So it doesn't make any difference what is going on politically or socially. They all know they should do their duty. So like one of the first, uh, you could say, research studies was done by Adolf Hitler. He wanted to know what his troops thought about being in Russia and fighting the war. And back came the report. They're not buying his propaganda. They're fundamentally there because it's their duty to obey, their, to, to obey, to obey, to obey. I mean, that's their duty. That's why they're in the war. That's why they'll hold on to their post. <laughs> he got so upset, he said, would not allow that, of course, that such a report to get out. But it was, it was made. That sounds a lot like our military, the way that's designed. Well, you, know, you just do it because that's your Like job. whole cultures have a right or wrong pervasive, right. Japanese have. Right. Right? They're Can you spot a Japanese with a problem? Um, Would you say Japanese as a culture have a problem? Of course. Yes. Right? They're very... A pervasive? Agreeable. Agreeable, they're polite, uh, they uh, want to do their duties, you know, as a, as a citizen of the whole country. And that beneath it all is? Of that duty. Mm. Individuality. Does not stand out. Yeah. Yeah. 